Oh, when you when you don't know a machine, it's uh, quite fun. Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy. Today we're diving into a piece of retro computing history that's a little out of the ordinary. The Thomson M05. Remember the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64? Well the M05 was France's answer to those iconic home computers and was launched in 1984. It even booted straight into Microsoft Basic, making it a programmer's dream. But what truly sets the M05 apart is a limited edition so unusual it might make your jaw drop. Imagine a classic M05, but instead of the usual colouring, it's dressed in sleek white. And to top it all off, it's signed by none other than football legend Michel Platini. was sold in its own custom sleek bag and came complete with its own software and accessories. Intrigued? Then stick around while I rip this apart, freshen it up and see if the old dog can come out kicking. Yeah, that was a very bad pun, wasn't it? But hey, this is a genuine Thomson M05 limited edition Michel Platini version. Oh goodness, do I even say that right? Who knows what's in the bag? Well, the bag is actually part of the limited edition. It comes in this really snazzy case. Let me zoom out a bit. <laughs> okay, as far as I can go carry strap um, which is at its shortest at the moment let me open it up a bit so I can move the strap out of the way and we can unzip the bag and see what's inside it is shockingly white so here we go these are all the pictures of what it should be just as I purchased it. What can we see? Well, we can see the M05 itself. This should be a stock M05 tape deck. It comes with a joystick adapter. I'm gonna guess this is the power supply. It comes with two white M05 controllers and I can actually see that, yeah, there's a reaction going on between the plastic and the cabling, so that's a shame. And it also came with its own software. We've got Super Tennis, and again, limited edition Platini version. We've got, <laughs> of course, we've got number 10, football. <laughs> yeah, always going to have that, and Premium Basic Volumes 1 and 2, all for the Platini Edition. Now, somewhere down here, oh, what have we got? Oh, we've got a random tape, Romulus, and Invasion. Just a pre-owned. And then at the very bottom, we've got the light pen, I do believe. Okay, let me pop this to the side and let's lift out the actual M05. So now we have it out the bag and I'm glad I stripped everything out because lurking at the bottom of the bag were three AA batteries which had leaked absolutely everywhere. I've no idea how long they've been in for but old enough that end caps had popped and stuff like that. They needed gone. So the bags had a good clean out. There's a little bit of sticky residue on the end of the machine. Hopefully nothing has got inside. However, the M05 itself is here. This is the Platini edition. Yep, they even put his signature on the machine and it came in this white color. Now, I also believe these keys are an upgrade on the stock as well. 
and judging by the state of everything I'm going to have to have all of these keys off and cleaned as well because they're quite grubby and filthy as you can see from the machine. There are some nicks in the casing, unfortunate, but nothing I can do about that and uh, yeah, it's definitely two-tone in colour at the moment. <laughs> power supply is here and we're going to start with that however let's have a look around the machine so we have power in this is a fixed SCART cable that's how they came in France the uh, SCART cable is huge in length we've got a connector at the back for expansion on this side you can see clearly it's marked for the pen which plugs in and allows you to draw and activate things on screen. Tape deck, nothing on this side, nothing on the front and nothing on the back. On the top we have the expansion port for ROMs and that's it there and I believe when you load in you've got to initialize uh, and effectively load the ROM in and then it'll run. Not actually having used a ROM, I couldn't tell you. That's one for us to find out later, maybe if I get my hands on some ROMs. Right, let's pop this to the side and crack on with the power supply. So the power brick or power supply made in France, we have a French connector for the mains. So I'm not going to be cutting this off and converting it, I'll just use an adapter like so. And that allows me, once it's plugged in, to plug it into the mains in the UK. This is 17 volts <laughs> output DC. For, for a system that's quite chunky. And one, two, three, four screws hold this together. So let's pop it apart and see what we find inside. And there we are, one capacitor to replace, bridge rectifier and a fuse. So nice to see it is fused. So let's get this capacitor replaced. So while I was doing all that, I noted that there is a break in the cable. So I'm going to desolder this and uh, cut it here, resolder this section back in and we should be good because this slides along. And there we go, all clean, all rebuilt, hopefully a little bit safer. So let's just do a quick test. Power on. Didn't go bang. Let's check the output. So let's power on. 25 volts. Quite, uh, quite an output instead of 17. Again, it's not under load. So I'm going to guess internally there has to be some form of rectifier. There has to be some form of LM maybe. Uh, we'll see when we get there. But this is running and doing exactly what it should. Let's grab the MO5 and continue from there. Now this is held together with four Phillips screws. So let's pop this apart and get down to the main board. So here we are, we're in, we get our first look at the inside of the MO5. Interesting, are these memory modules? Strange. But we can see a number of caps that personally I want to replace. A big standoff on the top of the button just to extend everything down. I'm going to guess that'll just pop off. But yeah. 
lots of dust bunnies and look at the the back of the case not so great i've got to pop the keyboard out as well because i need to give everything a good clean interesting that they're using a kind of white plastic and then they've obviously painted on top right let's get this down fully And again, like my Atari 7800, I see one resistor high up in the air. This time though, I think it's original because it's underneath all these dust bunnies and that's original hot glue. <laughs> so that will need sprayed before I can get these caps out properly. The first thing, let's give this a clean and then recap and check this. Well that's the board all recapped, with the exception of this one capacitor. It's rated at 50 volts. I think the 25 volt version I've got would probably work, but I'm just going to replace like for like, so I'm having to order that up. So that'll be done off camera. And this is a BDX54, and I don't have any, so I've just popped it back in in the meantime. So as far as this part is concerned, this is finished. Let's pop it to the side and we'll move on and we'll look at the keyboard. So let's pop the keyboard out. I'm going to remove these as well so I can get this away and get it cleaned because there's a lot in here and it needs a good scrub. Wow, okay, that's a lot of dust bunnies. Yeah, this definitely needed a good clean. I'm going to, I think, pop all the keycaps as well. And the keycaps, the base, uh, are all going to get a good scrub. Right, let me continue <laughs> stripping and cleaning this. And there we are, that is quite disgusting. We even have a, a live larvae of something that's been living in this. So this is why you really need to do restoration. <laughs> um, I have no idea what it is, it's going to be evicted. I mean, look, look, look at that. And it's such a shame because look at the colour of the key and yet it's this nice blue to match the uh, the aesthetic of the machine. I don't know if that'll retro bright to be quite honest. I don't know how to bring that up. Such a shame. Right, keys are all going for a good bath, as is this, and I need to evict this guy. So see you in a bit.
and that's everything clean and back together looking good much nicer than it was uh, I do have to say these are actually meant to be a rather nice blue kind of like this blue um, I think they've kind of faded through time and the underside of these keys is grey so I don't know if this is a finish or if they've just oxidised but I'm not sure there's a way to recover them. I did think of something like T-cut, but T-cut is abrasive and it may well just take off the lettering. So that would be absolutely no good. Well, with this done and the main motherboard done, let's reassemble this Thompson. And there we are, all back together. The connectors are exceptionally short. I ended up having to use pliers and grab just the outer edge, the clear plastic, and try and push it down into the, the connector. So I hope that's made a good connection. Assuming, of course, the membrane's fine. Let's pop this onto the TV, put some power in, and find out if we get anything from this. So here we are, we're all ready for testing. We are plugged in, TV is on. We need to make sure we switch it over to SCART. There we go. Move this over a little bit and we'll bring in the power supply because of course it has an LED to show it's on. So let's find out what happens. And there we go, MO5 Basic 1, um, Microsoft 1984, superb. Uh, I don't know this machine, but... Okay, <laughs> do we have a delete? Okay, let's just do keyboard test. Right, keyboard seems to run. Ooh, what did I do? Oh, I hit RAS, which is also clear screen. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to going for shift here. <laughs> it's also a French keyboard. And there we go. It's certainly doing what it should. Hopefully stop that. Excellent. Okay, let's just pause. Okay, how do I actually stop this? Excellent, I have no idea, no idea how to, let's pause. How do you break into the program? <laughs> oh, when you when you don't know a machine, it's uh, quite fun. Okay, I am actually going to pause the video here. So thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's really really important that you like, and subscribing would be amazing because I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. A nice milestone. We'd like to get over that hurdle. But regardless, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next Retro Crazy. Okay, I found it. You hit stop, and then you hit initial program, and there it is. <laughs> Bye.